What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly create this uh, shape right here. It's a little bit complicated, not really, but just because we have a cylindrical shape facing up and then a cylindrical shape facing this direction. So it's kind of like an infinite loop, so to speak. I'm gonna show you how to make that in this video. And as always, if you need our help learning hard surface modeling in about two weeks of time, you can check out our accelerator program in the link below. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is scale this on the Z and then scale this a bit on the Y and then control A to apply the scale. And the first thing I wanna do is bevel these two edges right here. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit on the scroll wheel, press the C key, and then just to make sure I get rid of these overlapping edges, I'm gonna select everything M, merge by distance, just like that. And then what I wanna do is I want to add in a cylinder to kind of make a cylinder in the opposite direction so we have this like interesting looking shape i'll show you what i mean first let me shade this auto smooth and then rotate this 90 degrees over the y and i'm just gonna maybe make it about that size right there and then i'm just gonna add in a actually before i do that let me make this a little bit shorter then i'm gonna add in a cylinder 64 vertices here shade auto smooth and we're going to rotate this one 90 degrees over the y so now if i scale this down right to about there you're going to have this circular element facing up and then this circular element going in this direction it kind of gives us this uh more or less impossible shape and i'll show you how to actually fuse this together so the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure this is flush right at the top so instead of scaling that and eyeballing it what we can actually do here scale that up a bit go into this object take this face here at the top and then if we go up here to vertex snap i can press g z and then hold control to snap it to that top uppermost vertex and then i'm just going to go ahead and symmetrize down there to the bottom using mesh machine it's a little bit quicker and then we're going to go to this face and we're going to snap that one to this side here it's a little bit hard to see, but we're just gonna snap it right there to that outermost area. And then as a matter of fact, we're just going to move this further. Let's snap it right to that point. So you can kind of see the shape we've created here. We're almost you know, where we need to be. Now the last thing I need to do is I need to make sure this face is snapped here, and then this face is snapped here. Alternatively, you can just you know symmetrize to the other side. So now all we need to do is union this shape to this shape here. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift click on both. You can press control plus on the number pad with hard ops to run a union, or you can just press Q, booleans, and then union right there. Now it's glitchy because we're occupying the same face as the other objects. So we need to go in here to the Boolean modifier and change this over to exact, all right? And um, that should be working fine. And then we can go ahead and apply that boolean now here's a little trick that i like to use whenever i use union booleans like this because oftentimes it's not going to be a perfectly clean result if i uh you know go in here you're going to kind of see the the problem we have let me let me hide that you're going to see that it's not you know we have some stray geometry here so here's a cool trick with machine tools with the machine tools plugin as long as you have all of these settings here turned on let me show you turn on all these settings machine tools is a tool that everybody should have it's five dollars it saves you a shit ton of keystrokes so make sure you get it then what you can do is you can select everything press three that'll remove any sort of redundant messy geometry and then you can combine that operation with the limited dissolve feature to get rid of the junk on the flat surfaces basically so I'm going to press X and then go to limited dissolve and set this to about 0.1 so we're not actually dissolving out the rounded areas. And then that combination is going to give you a perfectly clean union. That's a cool little trick that you, uh, you can hopefully use in your own workflow. Now I'm just going to go into wireframe, box select this area or these vertices here, and then just kind of slide that back a bit. And then shift S to selection to cursor. 
Well, actually, first of all, the origin is still in the middle. So right click, set origin to geometry, shift S to move the selection, which is this, to the 3D cursor. That'll just move it back into the center, just my OCD speaking, really. And there we go. Now we have a pretty interesting looking shape right here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go in. I want to add in a cylinder. Again, 64 vertices is fine. I can scale this down a bit. And then I'm just going to move this. Let me go back to increment snap. I'm going to move this over to here. And then just run a difference Boolean on this shape to kind of get this result right here. And then I'm going to go into edge mode or edit mode. Control R to add in a loop cut. And then one of my favorite uh, design tricks is to just add in a single segment bevel. E to extrude this, right click, and then Alt S to kind of scale that in. Scale that down a bit on the Z. And then you can actually go in and then just bevel these areas here. So basically Alt, Shift, Click, all of these areas. Control B and then just add in a nice bevel there on the inside basically. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a cube. I'm going to scale this cube on the Y or on the X. Move this back a bit and then I'm going to run a difference boolean right here through this side. And then what you can actually do is you can turn off the overlays and you can scale this on the X and kind of see visually what uh, you know these shapes look like as you kind of scale this boolean right here. So this is just kind of like an intuitive feeling. If I go too large, this kind of looks, I mean, this could look okay, actually. It's not too bad. You could also go very thin and you'll get a shape like this. It kind of depends on like what you want to make, how you want the shape to look. This looks kind of interesting. And I think what we could do here is create this shape. And then what I could do is um, add in, oops, let me add in a cylinder. Sometimes it's hard to see, I'm like recording and then my mouse is like blocked by my mic. So it's a bit hard to select sometimes, but I'm gonna kind of scale this down and then move this cylinder over to here. And just like that, we can kind of make this shape and maybe scale that down just a bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and union these two together. And then what we need to do is create a bevel right where we have that union. So in order to access that geometry, I have to actually apply that particular Boolean right there. So matter of fact, um, we're just going to, we can just apply all of them. So I'm going to go into hard ops, operations, and then smart apply. Guys, if I'm going too quick at all, or you're not really used to these tools, or uh, you know, you're somewhat of a beginner, grab our accelerator program in the link in the top of the description. This is the quickest way to fast track the entire hard surface modeling workflow. We've designed and condensed down everything into a simple two week program, and you can learn this entire workflow with about 30 to 60 minutes a day. It's not an exaggeration. We have uh, you know, about four, 1,800 students now and counting. So uh, we'll get you very, very good at this workflow very quickly. So check that program out in the top of the description. But other than that, we're gonna go in here and just take this edge and then bevel that. Now it's beveling a bit strange. Let me first of all check our scale. So control A to apply the scale and that should fix it. And then to kind of fix that weird bevel we have going on right there, Whenever you add in the bevel, turn off the loop slide feature and that'll fix it. And we'll just symmetrize over to the other side right there. Shade that auto smooth. Just like that. And then I'm also going to go in here and control click all the way down. We have some stray vertices here. I'm going to actually just merge that to there. Just fix this connection point a bit and then symmetrize over. And then what I'm gonna do is just go in. You can press three with machine tools to clean up any junk. And I'm gonna take this entire area here and then just run a single chamfer like that. And then symmetrize that over. And then I'm gonna take this outer area and I'm gonna use the L select feature in mesh machines. You can select one edge, alt click the same edge, that'll select the correct loops. If you just use the regular alt command in Blender 
it's not going to select the right loop. So you can use the L select feature in Mesh Machine, or you can go in and control click all of this manually. It's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and chamfer that. And again, you can turn off overlays and just kind of, you know, visually see how the different sizes look. I think this looks bad, so let's make this a bit smaller. Maybe about that size could be okay. Pretty simple. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna actually borrow from this cutters collection. I'm gonna borrow this cylinder right here. I'm gonna duplicate it, scale it down a bit, and then just kinda do something like that. And then just scale this on the X until it's right on the face right there. And let me show you a pretty cool trick. If you go into face mode and you select one of these faces, what you can do is you can flip the face normal so it's facing inwards. So instead of facing outwards, right, in this direction, it's facing inwards, which means the bevel, if I press Control B to bevel that, will bevel inverse, basically. So let's first apply the scale so the bevel is uniform, and then I can Control B to bevel that. So now you can actually make a reverse bevel, which is pretty cool. And go in, let me turn this off. And uh, there we go, now we have a pretty clean bevel, just like that. Now what I wanna do is I want to add in another cube. I'm gonna scale this on the Z. I'm gonna move it to about here. Run a difference boolean like that. And we can just again turn off the overlays and just kind of play with the shape, see what we like. That is interesting. That's a bit too large. That could work as well. There's like a good balance between like, you know, how, how large the scale should go. You have to kind of eyeball it and just kind of intuitively feel how the shape looks, um, you know, when you, when you make these adjustments here. So I'm just going to go in maybe right there. I think that could be okay. And then from there, I'm going to go to this cylinder here. And let me just add in a loop cut on the inside. I know it's a bit difficult to see, you know, everything with all these cutters. So what you could do with hard ops, it like automatically creates a cutters collection. So you could just go in and just turn these off if they bother you and just focus on this one. And we're just going to go in. We're going to do a similar shape. Alt S. Scale that a bit on the X. Let's make a nice bevel right there to the other side. That looks pretty cool. And yeah, it's a pretty, pretty interesting result right there. And then again, we can just turn on these cutters if we want to kind of mess with it. I could go back to this one and once again, just kind of, you know, scale that until I find a place that I like. I think right here is a bit better in my opinion. So we can do that. And this is what we have so far. The only thing I don't like is how it's cutting through there in the middle. It looks a bit strange. Um, so I could just go to that point, but that looks even worse if I'm honest. So I have to kind of figure out like what, what type of look do you want? Maybe if I scale that up, that could work better. If I scale that down, this kind of depends like what you're going for really. I think this is okay. And then I'll add in another, I don't really like how this is cutting through the cylinder. This isn't like very good visual design language in my opinion. We could get away with it, but what we could actually do is just delete it. So I could go in, maybe just add in like a cube like this. And now it'll actually look a bit more mechanical. This is all like stuff you'll train in your head over time. Uh, so I know a lot of you guys, like you'll be modeling and you'll kind of struggle with creating shapes. Like you know how to model, but creating shapes is where you struggle. So there's actually like a formula for this. I can't really explain it in this video. We go into, you know, deeper depth in the accelerator, but there is a, a way you can train like your visual design skills. So if you're not that creative, trust me, it can be learned. You just got to practice more and more. Now I cannot see a single thing. So I'm just going to turn off these booleans right here and I go in and do something like that. Maybe not as large. And then I could just kind of move this around again with the overlays turned off and just, uh, 
you know, see what I like. Now we do have some shading errors right here. That is normal. In order to fix those, what we would need to do is simply go in. I'm going to press Q, ever scroll, scroll to this one. And then we're just going to add in some loops here to get rid of those shading problems. So they're more mitigated. And then same for this area, you can kind of see that. So I'm just going to go into this thing. I'll scale that down a bit and then just add in some loop cuts here as well. That will get rid of the shading issues. It's not super obvious, but if I go into a different mat cap here, uh, maybe this one, you can kind of see the difference, right? We kind of mitigated that shading uh, a little bit better. So this looks uh, pretty good so far. We could go into maybe this mat cap, which looks interesting, but this is my favorite one right here. And again, since we're working, you know, pretty much completely non-destructively, you can move these booleans like wherever you want, really, and just kind of see what different shapes, you know, look best to you. Now, what I want to do is I want to go into the inside here and maybe add in a loop right here in the middle. And I'm going to make this, you know, quite a bit of bevels here, move that up. And then I'm just going to alt shift click all of these. E to extrude, right click, and then Alt S to kind of move that in like that. And then on top of that, what I could do is I could scale this on the Z, but we need to make sure we're choosing the individual origins. Otherwise, watch what's going to happen. It's going to scale them to a single point. Whereas if we go to individual origins, it'll scale along these individual origins instead. So that's kind of what we want right there. And then what I can do is I can go into hard ops, make a very, very small bevel right here, just to kind of highlight that and, uh, you know, do something like that. That is a bit heavy visually. So what I might do is make this element a bit uh, less heavy just to kind of counteract that. Or you could just remove that area completely, kind of up to you. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a cube. I'm going to make this very, very, very thin to about there. And then we're just going to run in a difference boolean right here through the center, just like that. So it kind of looks connected almost. And there we go. So that is it, guys. That is how you create a interesting shape like this. I am really enjoying these modeling tutorials. This is how I used to do it, you know, back in the day. And I know I could, you know, spam like modeling tutorials every single day. So until I get burnt out doing that, I think that's what I'm going to do. So if you like the modeling tutorials, then uh, we have a lot more coming. If you don't want me to make modeling tutorials, well, I would recommend finding a different channel because that's what I do. So there we go. That is how you make a simple shape just like that. And again, guys, if this was confusing at all or you want to learn, you know, more of the tools or you just want to get up to my level very, very quickly, grab our accelerator program and the link in the top of the description. We're going to get you very, very good, very close to my level. In fact, in about two weeks of time with just 30 to 60 minutes a day, we've done this for over 4000 students. Now I'll put a bunch of results on the screen so you can see it. And uh, at the very least, click the link in the description, see what's inside the program, and uh, you can check it out over there. This will quite literally take you to my level very, very quickly because you're learning the exact modeling tools and strategies that I use personally. So if you're interested in that, that'll be linked below. And again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.